What up, Ken? Fuck it, your boy Screwface Capone in the house, and this weekend is E3, the big game show. It's the first time we've had it since 2019. If you remember, it was canceled last year. So, basically, this is my big pre show video, and what I want to do is talk about some stuff that's going down at E3, um, some things I expect to see at E3, some rumors that have been popping up, and um, just my whole thoughts on it in particular. But, um, before we get in, I want you to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you want to um, if you want to see more content. And also, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, first of all, I will be streaming parts of E3 live on my um, Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Screwface Capone, starting tomorrow at 11 a.m., where, where I'll be live streaming the Gorilla Games show. Um, they had a show last week, and that turned out to be pretty interesting. Um, I, I want to catch this one's week. I want to catch this one this week, so, uh, plus I'll be having a, uh, special about black gamers, I mean, black game developers, and games with black protagonists, so that'll be a pretty interesting thing to have. Also, at 1 o'clock p.m., there'll be the Wholesome Games bit, so, um, basically games that where we don't sit around violence, aren't really AAA, just nice, relaxing, chill stuff. So if you're into stuff like, I don't know, maybe Donut County and, um, and with Stardew Valley, you'll want to check this one out as well. Um, later they'll be having a Devolver Digital Special, um, I'll probably check that out too, it'll probably be only a half hour long, and, um, I know they have the Ubisoft thing, and I'm debating on whether or not I want to see that, um, because of the recent sexual allegations, because of the recent sexual harassment allegations, um, plus I kind of know what I expect, plus I kind of know what's going to be there anyway, so, um, I might end up skipping that one, plus I need some time to go wash my clothes this weekend, um, also, I think Gearbox is going to be that same weekend. Um, I forget what time it's going to be. I think it might be like... Um, I think it might be right after the... Um, I think it might be right after the uh, whole Devolver Digital press conference. Let me look it up real quick. Just give me one second. So, you've already been showing some pretty interesting stuff. And I'll get to that in a second. Yeah, they're gonna have their they're gonna have their show like right after, so I might catch that. I know there's gonna be like lots of stuff about Borderlands and everything. Um, but anyway, on Sunday that's a really big show. Um, you got the Microsoft FS at 1 p.m., Square Enix at 3:15, the PC Game Show at 5, and the Future Game Show at 7 p.m. Um, PC Game Show should be pretty obvious. Um, They'll show a bunch of PC games, but there might be some surprises. Also, there's the future game show. Who knows what's going to show up there? I heard the last one they had was pretty interesting, so I might check this one out. Um, of course, as you know, the whole Microsoft and Bethesda thing is going to be the big litmus test for the Series X since it came out. You know, everybody wants to see new games and stuff, obviously, and we want to and um, we want to know about what's been going on with their studios that they've acquired. So, um, really, it's, it's going to be a make it or break for everybody because if you think about it, E3's been lackluster even before the pandemic. So, I think this time everybody's going to come out and hit swinging and stuff. Um, we already saw some pretty cool announcements. Um, at the, uh, uh, there was a game show yesterday where they showed off um, Elden Ring. You remember we first saw that back in 2019. Um, this year, um, they finally confirmed that they're still working on it, it's still a thing. And more shockingly, it's coming out this January. So, for those that don't know, that's a big collaboration between From Software and uh, George Martin of um, A Song of Ice and Fire, again, A Song of Ice and Fire of fame. Um, if you're, um, so it's your, it's pretty much if you like Dark Souls and Demon Souls, it's basically along the lines of that. Um, all that grinding, the tough difficulty. Um, but they got like these bizarre fantasy monsters, so it's definitely going to be one big game to look forward to next year. Now back to Microsoft and Bethesda, like, um, there are tons of rumors as to like what they're going to show and what might not be there. But the big thing is, um, Halo, is um, Halo Infinite. I mean, you saw how bad that turned out like last year. I mean, it wasn't terrible looking, but like, if you're thinking about like next-gen graphics, then... It really didn't give that impression, but um, 
I think like definitely Sunday will be the first sign that we see Halo Infinite since then. And um, hopefully it'll be improved. We'll probably learn stuff about the multiplayer. Um, we might even learn about like a possible beta or maybe even a release date because we know it's hitting this fall and a lot of people got their eyes on this one. Um, also, we know Forza, uh, Forza Motorsport 8 is coming is going to be coming out, um, but there's also rumors of a new Forza Horizon game that could be coming out as early as this year, and this one could be put, taking place in Mexico, so that could be a pretty interesting setting, like, I always love Forza and the way that you can customize your rides and, um, the way you can take on races and stuff, um, so I kind of like, so I enjoy that aspect of, um, Horizon, so hopefully that's true, um, also, there's been rumors of a new game called Project Omen, which is apparently some vampire-focused game. Um, it'll be, uh, if that's true, hopefully it'll be pretty interesting. Um, like, we could use, like, a fill-in for that uh, Vampire to Masquerade 2 that's been indefinitely delayed. Um, speaking, also, um, there's rumors that Hideo Kojima might be making a game with Xbox. But um, that probably is gonna see, doesn't seem likely because he was at the game show yesterday and he announced that um, PS5 version of Death Stranding. So, um, again, we'll see. Um, things that we probably won't be seeing at the um, show would be uh, um, Fable and Avowed. Um, maybe even Hellblade 2 because the, uh, like, the way it looks like, like they're still working on those and those are still out. Same thing with Starfield. Um, they might show off a little bit of it this year, but like um, at the er um, if I had to guess, the earliest we'll be seeing it is probably um, holiday of 2022. Um, there's also rumors like of a third Wolfenstein game, um, or maybe fourth if you count Young Blood. But um, also the we might, but well, we probably won't see the Indiana Jones game either. Um, Again, like, all these new studios from Bethesda were just acquired, so it's going to take some time to see some output. Like, a lot of these games, a lot of these studios are probably going to, like, most of your stuff probably ain't going to come out for another year, so. Um, interesting comment from Microsoft is that they want to put out a, a first, at least one first-party studio every quarter. If they can do that, then that'll be pretty, then, um, that'd be pretty dope. Um, I know they already got Psychonauts 2 on the way, but that's a multi-platform game. Also, in Exile, supposed to be working on something, but again, we won't be. That's another one we won't be seeing that for a while. So, like, we're probably gonna. So, um, this is gonna be a 90-minute show, so we're no doubt gonna see a lot of um, stuff from Microsoft and Bethesda, plus some third-party stuff. That's the one thing they've been really good with. But um, the one thing that's really annoyed me, like, about the conferences, is that they just show gameplay. Like, they just show, like, trailers for stuff and concept art. I want to see some actual gameplay. Um, so, I remember... Um, another, oh, yeah, another game they'll show off is... Um, what was it? The uh, the Crossfire X, because um, that should be getting pretty close to release. I remember playing the uh, um, beta last year, and um, it was pretty exciting. Plus, Remedy is working on a storyline, so I can't wait to see what's going on there. And no doubt they'll probably announce more studio acquisitions. So that's for Square Enix. Like um, Square Enix, they usually put out good stuff too. Um, the last few e the last few presentations they've had been pretty good. So um, obviously we'll learn some more stuff about Final Fantasy Integrate for PS5, um, Final Fantasy 14. Um, Let's see what else. Final Fantasy 16, which is going to be a time exclusive for PS5. Um, there's rumors of a action of an action RPG style Final Fantasy that they're working with um, Team Ninja to make. Also, there's that Project Babylon game that they announced last year from Platinum Studios, but they haven't really shown too much of it since then. So I think those are main things we can look for from the Square show. Uh, let. So what else out there? Maybe stuff. For, maybe I don't know some Kingdom Hearts stuff. Um, maybe some old re-releases. Like um, if I had to guess, like maybe say the original Romancing Saga. Um, some some more of those games that were on the PS One. Um, who knows? Maybe Vagrant Story or Parasite Eve. Who knows? 
All right, so then on Monday, I um, I won't be seeing it. Um, on Monday, they got a whole bunch of stuff. They got they're showing off the Intellivision Amico, and that's gonna be like a, a half hour show. So probably nothing nothing huge and major from that. Let me look it up again. Let me make sure I got Sunday schedule. So there's also a show from Verizon, I'm not sure what that is, and a Take-Two interactive game along with Mythical Games and an Indie Showcase. Um, I'll be at work. Um, I work from home, but I'll I'll watch them while I'm here, but I probably but I won't be live streaming them, obviously. Um, one thing I will be live streaming, pre if I'm able to get off in time, is um, the Capcom show. Um, that should, like, I don't recall Capcom ever holding a show at E3. I could be wrong. So I think what they're probably going to go through is like some Resident Evil stuff. Like they just announced the casting for the Netflix TV series. We'll probably see more of that animated series that's coming out. Um, maybe we'll even get some new DLC for Village. Um, we might even hear about the uh, Resident Evil 4 VR game. And there's also rumors of a remake of Resident Evil 4, which I really don't think is necessary, but hey. Also, there's um, eight, there's um, Great Ace Attorney, or whatever it's called. Um, the Ace Attorney spinoff, and obviously new stuff for Monster Hunter and the Monster Hunter stories. Obviously some more stuff for Street Fighter V, and maybe even a few surprises here and there. Who knows? Um, the next day, of course, is Nintendo's going to have their direct. Um, so they're saying that it's going to be game focused, and I know there's been like tons of rumors about them coming out with a Switch Pro, but I doubt that's going to be the case. Um, we will see at least one of the final two characters from Smash. Who knows? Um, maybe some more re-releases. Um, hopefully we can see some stuff on Metroid Prime 4. Because it's been like, what, four years since they announced it. They gotta have something. Like a teaser trailer, a uh, demo, or who knows. Or who knows. Um, I want to say Bayonetta 3, but um, Platinum Games said that not to expect to hear anything about that for a while so there's that and also breath of the wild 2 i doubt we'll be hearing a whole lot of that but there could be some surprises um what i expect to be is a mix of uh first part of okay maybe splatoon 3 um we might be seeing some stuff on that even nothing concrete but i think this one again is going to be a mix of uh of new games coming out third party releases and um, other indie and um, like indie and PC games are coming to the system. Because earlier this week we heard that Deliverance Kingdom Come is coming to the um, to the Switch later this year. And later that day is going to be like Bandai Namco. Um, that's pretty interesting too, because there because that's another company that usually doesn't hold its own show. Um, and why? And it looks like it's going to be an out a little over an hour long and. We'll, we'll no doubt see some more stuff about Elden Ring, um, maybe some more updates to Tekken 7, um, maybe even newer game. Um, we might see some more Soul Calibur 6 stuff, um, maybe some more stuff for their anime stuff like uh, Gundam, Dragon Ball, um, Naruto, and One Piece. And they might have some other stuff in store for us like maybe Pac-Man or some stuff based on their classic titles. Again, this is all... Again, this is all speculation. All right, so we've already seen some cool stuff already. They had, like I said, they had the, uh, they had a big game show yesterday, and it was called, uh, what was it? What was it? Um, go back to Code Talk. Let me go back to my browser for a second. So yeah, the, the uh, big summer game. Game Fest, where they, uh, and Day of the Devs, where they showed off a bunch of cool stuff. Um, I missed both of those, but I'll be, but I'll probably be going through, I'll probably be doing, um, I'll be doing a recap, like, sometime next week. Um, probably never top 20 list like I did with the Game Awards. So, uh, so, like, there's a bunch of, so... There's a Borderlands spinoff, um, Tiny Tina, that they announced yesterday. Uh, a bunch of indie, um, bunch more indie. Oh, Scarlet Nexus. That's another one we'll, we'll no doubt be seeing from the um, Bandai show. 
Matter of fact, I got the demo for it and I'll probably play it for another um, showing of Shark Tank. Um, so yeah, there's Scarlet Nexus. That's com that Nanko got coming out. Um, also, um, Koch Media, they had their big show today. Um, and they showed off several titles that are coming out. Um, King's Bounty 2, some update. Um, yeah, King's Bounty 2, Payday 3, um, Painkiller sequel, and several new titles. And again, I'm going to recap. Again, I'm going to recap these because I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, but like, Koch Media, that's the parent company of um, Deep Silver. And while obviously they didn't show anything about a new Saints Row or Time Splitters title, they did. Um, they are like one of the last few publishers of what's called middle tier, middle shelf games. Um, a phrase I borrowed from Jim Sterling, obviously. But like, what that is is like they're not triple A, but they're not indie either. They're kind of like in between that space. So usually it's just like traditional, like um, single player style, like action focus RPG stuff. Like nothing that really pushes the envelope. But then they're not terrible games either. Um, like they're like nothing they absolutely like mind blowing, but they do provide like great gaming experiences. Like um, like I think Focus Interactive that's another one of those companies, even though like they have a bad rub with some of their with some of their um developer development teams, and um who else? I want to say 505. Ga well, I wouldn't say 505 games necessarily. Yes, I would. Um, kind of. But like, um, if you if you wanna if you want a good idea of what I'm talking about, check out games like Greedfall, The Surge. Um, what else? What else am I thinking? Um, um, maybe uh, obviously I can't say Saints Row, could I? Um, but if you play games like Greedfall, um, Warhammer Space Marine, um, that's a I was streaming that earlier this week, and that just came to mind. But you know, what I'm trying to say like, not exactly triple, like between the indie and the triple A space, where like it's like nothing big, major, but they do provide, but they do provide you with a solid gaming experience. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um. So yeah. So again, I will be streaming starting tomorrow, um, at 11 a.m. and Sunday from 1 p.m. So grab some snacks. I'll be streaming live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Screwface Capone. So you can join me, watch as I react. You can watch alongside me, and we can just chill together and watch stuff about games for the next four to six hours these next couple days. Um, I might stream the Capcom one. I might stream the Namco one as well. Otherwise, I might just do write-ups. And speaking of which, um, I probably won't be doing 5-Bit News this week. Um, maybe it'll be the, um, It might be a recap of this past weekend. But then again, I might just save that for the for um sometime next week, obviously because of the E3 stuff. But um, also uh, for those of you who got TikTok and you can't make it, then you know and you can always just chat with me on TikTok because I'll be doing a live session there as well. And if you can't make either, I will of course post a replay on YouTube along with my thoughts. Um. So again, this is the E3 pregame show. Um. If you like what you just saw, hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me what you're expecting, what you're looking forward to, and um, because like, of course, as I forgot to mention, Battlefield 2042, but we'll probably be seeing that. But again, like, comment, let me know what you're expecting to see. Let me know what you want to see, and um, let me know what you're hoping to see, and all that, and any other thoughts. And also hit that subscribe button. That way, you'll be the first to know when I put out new content. I got tons on the way. Um, I posted a few videos this week. So um, make sure you're subscribed and click the bell icon. That way you'll be the notification. That way you'll get to be notified when I drop something. So until then, have a great weekend. Have a great um, hope you enjoy E3. And if you plan on watching with me, um, I'll see you real soon. Peace 51000 G.